Hello, this is Professor Bennett again from DigitalAudioTheory.com. This programming example, 10.4.1, we will develop a sweeping resonator filter. By now, you know that a zero near a particular frequency on the complex plane produces attenuation at that frequency, while a pole produces gain. We can imagine a pair of poles that are conjugates of one another. They could be placed around the z-plane to introduce peaking gain uh, for a particular frequency a type of filter known as a resonator. As the pole approaches the unit circle, the gain increases, as does the range of frequencies that are affected. Any frequencies that are within 3 dB of the peak frequency together comprise the bandwidth, B, of the resonator. We can also define a normalized bandwidth as simply 2 pi times the desired bandwidth in hertz over Fs. Once this has been specified, we can set the pole radius A as 1 minus the bandwidth over 2, the normalized bandwidth over 2. However, we cannot simply assume that a pole location will correspond precisely with the peak frequency. This is because the conjugate pole is pulling on the peak towards itself. Below Fn over 2, this results in a shift of the actual peak towards 0 Hz, and above Fn over 2, a result in, uh, this results in a shift towards Fn. You imagine a pole sitting here and another conjugate pole down here. You imagine this pole wants to create a peak right next to it, and so does this but this one is also going to influence this pole here. This pole is going to influence all the frequencies up here. So the true peak is going to be very near this one, but slightly off. So the impact of the conjugate pole is influenced by the pole radius. So we have to account for this by setting the pole frequency, which we'll call fx, based on our desired frequency location, peak location, F0. Finally, the amount of peaking gain depends entirely on the pole radius. The larger the A, the more gain there will be at the resonant frequency. If normalizing the gain, for example, to 0 dB is desired, then the input, which is the numerator of the transfer function, must be scaled down. This normalization factor will be stored in a variable called A0. Now, a sweeping resonator is a time-varying effect in which the resonant frequency, F0, changes over time. In this example, F0 is going to increase um, every time the sample index increments. The starting state of the sweeping resonator is going to be centered at 100 hertz, with a bandwidth of also 100 hertz. This resonator is going to increase at a rate of 0.1 hertz per sample for a duration of two seconds. The input to the resonator is a random noise signal, and since F0 changes every sample, the pole frequency and normalization factor, omega x and A0, also need to be recalculated every sample. So. Let's set this up. This will be a two second sweep at a sample rate of 44.1. We already said that the start frequency and the bandwidth are both going to be 100 hertz. Um, the normalized digital bandwidth is our uh, um, 100 hertz divided by fs over 2 pi. And we set our pole radius equal to 1 minus that b over 2. We're going to initialize our filter states to 0. Okay. Then, every sample, we're going to generate a new random value. So RAND 1, 1 is going to produce just one value between 0 and 1. So we need to uh, scale it down uh, to uh, negative 0.5 to plus 0.5. Then we'll multiply 2 to get it in the range of negative 1 to 1. So we're going to generate a new random value. Next, we need to determine the new frequency location. So that's where we increment our previous center frequency by 0.1 hertz. 
and we need to convert that to a pole location. Okay, here it is in, uh, in radians. So here is our pole location. So this equation is given in the textbook, Digital Audio Theory. Uh, but the pole location is going to deter is going to be based on the obviously where the peak where we want the peak to be as well as the pole radius. Finally, we need a normalization factor. This is going to go inside the numerator, and then we're going to uh, calculate the output of the resonator difference equation. So here's our resonator difference equation, also derived and given in the textbook. And uh, after we've calculated the output, we want to uh, update all of our states. So our previous n, a y of n minus 1 becomes our new y of n minus 2. Our current output becomes our next y of n minus 1. So let's give this a listen. As we listen to the process noise, we can clearly hear the center uh, of the resonator sweeping up in frequency. In the next programming example, we will develop a proportional parametric EQ. Until then, thanks for watching.